All right, hey guys, I'm Brian, and today I'm reviewing another really terrible aviation movie. Uh, this movie is absolutely horrible, and it's so horrible that it's awesome. Um, it's every scene is so unbelievably bad. It would it would almost just just play the movie for you right here and let you watch the whole thing. Today's movie is called Airplane vs. Volcano, which sounds stupid, and it is. Um, this movie stars Dean Cain and Robin Givens, who are both way too big to be in this movie, and I absolutely mean that. It would have made more sense for me to play the, the role of the pilot in this plane, but it also does have a lot of really horrible actors like this guy who's lucky to be in anything at all. We can send you on your way. Dr. Lisa Widmore called in the disaster. Listen, Doc, if there were any volcanic activity, we would already know all about it. Maybe he was sleeping with the director, I don't know, but the guy, the whole movie, every time he comes on scene, I get so happy because he's so terrible. As with all aviation movies, the plane has on it a scary foreign passenger who comes from an ambiguously threatening country that would have frightened moviegoers in 2014. I bet you know. I don't think so. If anyone is getting off this plane, it's me! And much like the last movie I reviewed, a guy goes out on the wing in the middle of the flight and tries to do some stuff on the outside of the plane. Why do they keep doing that? Like, um... If you know of any other movies where people get out on the wing in flight, tell me about them in the comments because that's fascinating that anybody would put that in a film. Um, all right, so let's get to the plot. Airplane versus volcano. So we've got scientists in what appears to be Hawaii measuring seismic activity because this volcano that's been dormant since the earth cooled, I guess, is now alive. Um, we have some really bad acting. we got a guy on the beach here. The lava appears to be laughing and growling. I don't know what lava sounds like. I've never even seen a volcano erupt. I certainly haven't flown through one, uh, but maybe it makes that sound. I don't know. So something's not right early on in the film. The aircraft flies from severe clear straight into hell, at which point the captain exclaims, Our compass is wrong. There must be some kind of magnetic interference out there. I find it weird that he's mad at the compass because then the camera pans across the panel of all this really sophisticated instrumentation. I haven't looked at a compass since 2013, so they realize they're in trouble, and so the captain's telling his first officer that we're going to need throttle, but not now. I don't know why. If there's a commercial pilot out there who's flown through a volcano, can you tell me why you would want to wait on throttling up and getting the hell out of there? Um, he's like, kind of a wait for it, wait for it, go. Now when I tell you, I need you to lay down on that throttle. Only when I tell you. I hear you, captain. And then the throttle, of course, is comically hard to push. Maybe they are. I don't know. There's, it's, it's literally every scene in the movie is this dumb. Listen. Look out! I see, I see. All right. So we're flying through the volcano, the eruption, and everything's horrible. And both pilots get killed by some debris that comes flying into the aircraft, but there's no depressurization, there's no breach, there's no nothing that would indicate something has penetrated the aircraft, so I don't know. One of the things that they, they have in this plane is a password-protected autopilot. Is that a real thing? I don't know. Um, but they note in the movie that ever since 9-11, they've had to password-protect the autopilots to turn them off and on. And, of course, the guy dies halfway through telling the flight attendant what the code is so she can't turn off the autopilot. Oh, the code! For the autopilot? Zero lie! Dan! Dan! Dan, what is the passcode? Uh, it's on autopilot. Help us out! That's a volcano! Good ah. lord! Hey, I need to know what you know. I can help. And you'd think an autopilot on a plane would just fly you wherever you're going. Not this autopilot. This autopilot is... It's stuck on autopilot in a constant loop. Yeah, to prevent terrorist takeovers, they installed an encoded autopilot system. And of course, he knew all the codes. I study volcanoes, and uh, I doubt this is the worst. In fact, I think they're just waking up. Keep your distance, and uh, don't fly us too close, or you'll cook us. There's a little bit of movement in the wheel. I might be able to force it to maneuver. There's definitely no chance of flying over that thick ash cloud. That'll destroy our engines. We're gonna have to ride it out. Yeah. 
and pray we don't get any aftershocks. That's right. This autopilot's stuck in a loop. It's one of those, I guess he was in a hold and then just going to keep flying. He was on a hold in a volcano. Um, it's a good thing the airplane was stuck in a loop because best I can tell, there's only about three different outside shots that they paid a video company to render of the exterior of this aircraft and they keep showing the same exact shot over and over. So maybe that's why they're like, we can't afford a lot of footage of this plane. Autopilot's in a loop. All right, so we've got this plane that's stuck in a loop through some sort of giant mega erupting volcano. You've got the nerd guy on the plane who knows one of the scientists on the ground and decides he's going to break open and rewire the onboard phone so he can somehow communicate with her. She happens to work with what appears to be some advanced military group that has something to do with earthquakes and also has access to a lot of airplanes. So these guys who report to... Uh, the other guy who's the okay just got a bad actor guy and they report to him and he's like no you can't if you think i'm gonna send one of my men near those all i'm suggesting is that we launch a probe into one of the volcanoes they call their like adrenaline junkie skydiving buddies who happen to have a c-130 and without telling pops they get their friends with the c-130s to fly up and try to tow the 747 out of the erupting volcano <laughs> On this plane. Oh. We're have to drop it. The C-130 is not strong enough to tow the 747 out of the volcano, which is a great idea. They have these lines that they try to wrap around the plane and pull it out. But then they decide what they can do is they can have the people on the C-130 zip line down to the 747, pull the people out one at a time, and then zip line back up to the C-130. That right there is people defying all physics and zip lining into the wind up to a C-130 out of their 747. Naturally, they get a lot of side characters and sort of disposable people in the C-130 before it goes crashing into the volcano and they all die. Fortunately, all the people we know and love are back safe on the 747. So a giant rock has hit the plane's engine and gotten lodged in the front of it. What do you do? Well, you read the POH. You tie a bunch of seatbelts together and you form a rope around your body and you have the people feed the seatbelts to you so you can go out of the airplane. And he's got some kind of hammer or something. And the dude is a hero. He absolutely unclogs the engine and then immediately gets sucked into it, clogging it back up, recreating the exact same problem they had before. <laughs> Sorry for the spoiler alert. He dies. Um, so far, every one of these movies where someone climbs outside the plane to save the day, they die. That's weird. Everything's going crazy. Finally, Sarge, I'm calling him Sarge. I don't remember his name. It doesn't matter. Finally, Sarge is like, yeah, we can send our guys up there to go do something. Men, we have a duty. And that is to protect our people. No matter how dangerous Sergeant Graham, ready the jets. Yes, sir. And uh, so what they do is they take off and they start firing missiles at the volcano and they get really, really excited. Every time they get a direct hit, they exclaim, I got a direct hit. I'm thinking, it's a mountain. Like, you should every time get a direct hit. Um, by firing missiles at the base of the volcano, they're relieving the pressure, which is already escaping out of the volcano. That's what a volcano is. It's a hole where pressure's escaping. But by firing missiles, I guess they're evening out the amount of pressure, which quickly subdues the eruption and makes everything great. 
All right, so the point is, you got to go see this movie. It's Airplane vs. Volcano. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, someone recommended it to me on a comment or in a forum or something like that. And as soon as I saw the title and I saw it had Dean Cain and Robin Givens, uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to watch this. And from the moment the credits start until the moment they, they shut down, I couldn't stop just watching with my jaw open at like how this got made. Like People got in a room together and agreed, yeah, we're going to do this. And Dean was like, yeah, I'm in. I, I, I'm please. Uh, Robin Givens probably was looking for, they're probably both looking for work. Um, but yeah, a lot of people decided that this thing needed to be made, and I'm glad they did. So go get on, you know, you can find it on YouTube. You can find the whole video on YouTube, uh, Airplane vs. Volcano. It was made in 2014. Um, stop what you're doing now. Stop what you're, subscribe, like, bell, all that, please. I'm begging. But then immediately after, click the bell and then go YouTube, Airplane vs. Volcano. And hopefully you got two hours because it's going to be the best two hours of today. Uh, so go do that. Um, and then uh, let me know in the comments if there's more movies like this. This is an absolute blast. I like making these videos. I like reviewing these. I love watching them because it's absolutely stupid. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys fly safe. I hope you watch the movie. If you watch it, let me know what you think in the comments. You guys have a great day.